What is up everybody? It's been a little while since I've done a video about Juggernaut because I've done a video about him a while ago. He's one of those characters that is God tier when it comes to when I say strength, I'm talking about Hulk tier. But he doesn't have that many showings. He doesn't have flashy feats like Hulk and stuff. So, oh man, you know, but he fights them. The battle feats are flashy to me. How strong is Juggernaut? I'm going to add a little bit more information than last time because last time I added, you know, just the basics and stuff like that. Some new things have occurred, new comic series. And maybe old stuff that I never got a chance to mention. And I can dissect them a little better since then. But before I get right into it, thank you all that have donated to the channel. Appreciate it a lot. Let's talk about Juggernaut. This guy, Kane Marco, aka the Juggernaut, real name. He grew up with a massive amount of hatred for the world around him. Especially his adopted brother, Charles Xavier, who his father loved more than him. When in Korea, during the Korean War, Kane stumbled across an ancient temple, which contained a huge glowing ruby the Crimson Gem of Sidorak. Sidorak is a being, a demonic ruler of an alternate dimension, had created the gem in order to transfer a human host into an avatar of himself. Now, let's talk about Sidorak for a second. It's kind of a good idea to get an idea of how strong Sidorak is, even though he doesn't directly scale to him. It depends on certain occasions, which we get to in the video. It's important to see how strong Sidorak is to get a bare minimum base on how strong Juggernaut could possibly be, or his fullest potential, one could say, because of, you know, him being a host to the Sidorak, you know? There was like a bet with these other powerful demons. Yeah, that yeah, Sidorak's not the only one. <laughs> yeah, made these totems. It stated here, created a totem. Held a fraction of its creator's vast power and would transfer the first human who touched it into a living embodiment of that power. Consider how strong Juggernaut is and these demons just a little piece of it. Let you know how strong these characters are. I mean, for Pete's sake, Juggernaut's a Hulk tier, and this is just a piece of this guy's power. That's ridiculous. And this is what I just explained to you, like, Ancient Temple is where he found this ruby, touched this ruby. He got transformed, made him bulkier, changed his armor, and that's where he resumed the name as the Unstoppable Juggernaut. Who is Sidorak? One could say Sidorak is kind of like a powerful Hell Lord, along with other Hell Lords like Mephisto, Hela... Dormammu, like a lot of them darkish type of characters, demon type characters, hell lord type characters. You see what I'm saying? He's a part of this group known as the Octosense. It's a group of powerful demons. Sidorak has magic ability on what level? Well, I know I already showed this already, but let's just say he can incapacitate characters like Nova, Herald of Galactus tier, Silver Surfer tier. He's even gotten altercations or battles with other mystical deities, if that makes sense. He's so strong, he even turned out the strangest spells against him. Isn't that crazy? Never before have bands disobeyed the wielder. Sidorak has need of you, mortal sorcerer. And of course, with his many altercations with Juggernaut himself, he blasts Juggernaut and ties him up. Stuff like that, as powerful as Juggernaut is. You know, obviously, it's not full power of Sidorak. Demonic empowerment. And of course, he can change his appearance because Sidorak can just do that. Right? Other servants just are nothing to him. Stuff like that. They can't break his grip. It's implied he has even reality warping where he shaped the Crimson Cosmos and made little people to worship him. Ha! Huh. He can teleport beings to him and he can also teleport them away. My avatars, my failures, he stated here. You are no longer necessary. I have a new champion. And for those that are curious, here's where he creates the Crimson Gem, even creating a force field around the Crimson Gem. One can say giveth, and one can say taketh the way he took away Juggernaut's power. It was that time where he turned Colossus into his avatar, you know, the unstoppable Colossus. Oh, man. Never forget that as powerful as Onslaught he is, he kind of stated that he cannot kill him thanks to him being bonded to the gem of Sidorak. It stays here. So as long as it stays bonded to you, you're indestructible. So he basically decided to trap him inside the gem, his life force. And this is how it looks inside of the gem, I guess. Being a Hell Lord type of character, you don't want to face Sidorak in his realm. Phoenix Force Colossus just got teleported away. He stated here, understand this, a demon lord in his domain is outside natural law. Do not dream that even with a fifth of that great power, you can face me here. Be gone. Even though they both was weakening this occasion, he has Spartan and Juggernaut on their adventures. You know, they got to have the Hell Lords and the Avatar fight in comics because that's how it is. I mean, he shaped Crimson Cosmos to nobody ages. And he resides in the Crimson Cosmos inside his own realm. It's crazy because he doesn't have that many feats, but he's pretty concrete in that at least Skyfather tier already. Just off gate. I'm talking about Sidorak at his full power being Skyfather. You know what I mean? He gave a little piece to Juggernaut, and, and Juggernaut ended up being Hulk tier, which is insane. Juggernaut's one of those characters. I mean, he even teamed up with the mutant known as Black Time before. He even served with the X-Men, helping him on some adventures, you know, and the new Excalibur. So I like when he be, like, teaming up with people. He's not that bad, right? Even though I got to admit, though, he has had power fluctuations a lot because Sidorak can pretty much choose how much power he wants him to have. You know, if his weakness in the past was psionic attacks. Oh, yeah, that was a fight with Thor. He's on that tier. Just in case you thought, but current Juggernaut has actually negated this weakness to psionic attacks. So, you know, just going in his head ain't gonna just cut it no more. So, psionic beings is not gonna be that easy like you thought. 
So how strong is Juggernaut? Wolverine's claws literally cut anybody, but they have trouble literally cutting Juggernaut. That's how durable he is. Thanks part of it, thanks to the mystical shield. A whole bunch of steel falling on him. Oh, he's good, bro. Rogue that had the strength of Captain Marvel punches him. Of course, he, he can fight powerhouses like this. He's okay after the hit from a Captain Marvel tier. That's kind of insane, ain't it? Since they're flying afterwards. You got to respect that. Look at all the windows that happen blown out. Hey, molten steel, my skin can take all that molten steel. He was able to endure a blast from a being known as the Stranger without dying, obviously. Blast from Cyclops to have enough power to destroy a small planet, and he laughed it off. I showed this in my other Juggernaut video. Thor summons all the power he got to do a God Blast. This is kind of insane because Juggernaut didn't even freaking flinch. One can say this wasn't the most mightiest God Blast he's ever made, but still. God Blast usually gets crap done. He's durable enough and strong enough to slug it out with an amped up Hulk that was Horseman Amped, Celestial Tech. Horseman of Apocalypse Hulk, basically. It's easy to underestimate Juggernaut's speed because he's like real bulky. He doesn't look that quick, but he has superhuman speed, reflexes. Speedball is a being that can like speed around bullets, right? Quickness, right? But Juggernaut's able to react and swat him out of the air. Characters like Beast underestimate his speed. They even stated that one time he blitzed Cyclops. Catches Deadpool. He fought evenly with characters like Conquest, who in the past has been fast enough to tag characters like Quicksilver or react to characters like Quicksilver, who is light speed. He freaking punched apart plays of a helicopter. Carter Gerda launched at him by Spider-Man. Just light work. And a wrecking ball thrown at him by Spider-Man. Reacts to it. Mid-flight. Swats it away because I'm quicker than you think. I absolutely hate drawing blood feats because it's like literally the most wonkiest thing to scale people off of. But in Juggernaut's case, it's more realistic because that's where the writers intend him to be in power. Right here, he was completely weakened. He wasn't at his full power of Crimson Gem. Fighting Ward War Hulk, uh, being on a totally different level. Was able to draw blood from him, but it didn't do too much damage. Though still got overpowered in this occasion, but he was completely weakened. Not at full power. No, at his normal levels of power, let me put it that way. Durability and strength wise he's yeah fighting thor tears proving that he's on that level taking several hits from characters like thor stuff like that he's even gotten a slugfest with hulk's son on that scar who has the old power has ridiculous potential reacting to him stuff like that overpowering him on certain panels you know don't act like scar and a beast i mean he did endure getting hit from scar all the way to freaking mars that's how hard he got hit he's gotten battle feats with hulk yep he's just on that level on several occasions there's a difference between a scuffle and just a war Juggernaut's fights with Hulk be a war. It's not like Hulk's like barely trying to fight him. No, no, he's fighting him seriously hard. I mean, the freaking raw power of his punches can turn like a granite island into powder. It states here, the ancient granite forms Cassidy Crag, shattering the rock, powdering it. His raw attack power can create shockwaves and earthquakes to a crazy degree at frightening speed. He was even able to temporarily restrain Captain Universe. This is him at his normal power levels. Yeah, he's concrete in that levels of power. He does this to Captain Britain in one occasion here. Large punch, far away distance. And he's one time put Hulk in a full Nelson, restraining him in this process, another occasion of his raw strength. Fights Thor, stuns Thor, knocks the Mjolnir out of his hand in this occasion. These are not scuffles, these are war. I mean, he even backhand Thor several blocks, like flies away. Most underrated characters of all time, Ben Grimm, The Thing. I got videos about him on the channel as well. He's even getting victories over The Thing, overpowering The Thing. Kind of showing he's really freaking strong. I mean, anytime he attacks, he makes these huge craters in the ground, might I add. Cyborg clone of Thor, get handled. Ragnarok, night night. And yeah, he has raw power enough to slam his hands together to make large shockwave that can knock out multiple people at once. Even does this to Cyclops from a distance. Shockwave, thunderclap. These little girders are cute to me. This tears apart a building. These are light work feats for being that's on the way past planetary ranges of power ripping apart or supporting a building is light work to him yes of course he can casually throw around tanks he's gotten plenty of cases in a fighting colossus he punches colossus through like this force like look at all that distance while iceman and omega level mutant iceman keeps on making more ice defenses and he keeps smashing through them before he can throw he just hits the ground hard enough if he wants to knock you off balance if you are trying to get away not a good idea one of his best battle feats of all time is being able to briefly knock down the stranger one would call a galactus tier being depending on how you look at it i mean he was on the little images of the cosmic hierarchy of marvel this is what i meant when i said that like when i say the cosmic tiers or the abstract tiers hierarchy in marvel the Stranger is on this list. They got them classified. Living Tribunal at the top. Infinity like second to the top. And then Chaos of Little Order. Like bottom of that. You know, below that is Galactus. Celestial. Not the most accurate, I would say accurate. But you get the idea. Stranger is on the list with Zeus, Odin, Galactus, Celestial. In between there. That's kind of insane, ain't it? Yeah, Juggernaut was able to knock him down right here. Didn't KO him or nothing, but just knocked him down. It's still impressive to me, wouldn't you say? And Police Blockade. Do you honestly think you're going to stop me? Let me tear up your blockade by just ripping apart the ground. <laughs>
Probably one of his most impressive showings of all time. In this occasion, he wasn't necessarily in armor. He fought Professor Hulk in a slugfest, matching him in skill, speed, and etc. Punching with so much raw power that he actually managed to get a KO on the freaking Hulk himself. Ridiculous. Should concrete him in them powerhouse tiers even further. I mean, for Pete's sake, in this occasion, he nearly broke his neck. He's gotten on fights with Thor on too many occasions. Thor's still awake over here in the corner, but just matching him in raw grappling contests. Bruce Banner had these force fields that, you know, Bruce Banner be having tech. He was able to create earthquakes with his punches on a crazy high magnitude. Probably one of his best showings of all time was literally matching Hulk, World War Hulk one-on-one, -on -one, blow for freaking blow. This is insane because this same World War Hulk was treating characters like the thing like fodder and the thing is a really strong powerhouse. And fighting multiple powerhouses, even characters like Doctor Strange, who was possessed by Zom, was having troubles with Hulk or keeping him down. This is probably one of his best feats to really show off Juggernaut's brute strength. Even though one could argue the Hulk wasn't really trying to kill Juggernaut, obviously, but obviously the right intent was made that Juggernaut was a better match compared to a lot of other heroes that War Hulk has fought. Like how this same War War Hulk literally bullied Colossus, who's pretty freaking strong in his own right, but yeah, he couldn't do this to Juggernaut. Like, you see the same, you see what I'm saying? It's a difference in power. And just don't think Colossus is a light either i mean he's had some times where he gave savage hulk some issues issues you know what i mean in the past world war hulk's on another level obviously than this this same world war hulk was able to overpower beings like darwin whose only way to adapt was to be somewhere else keep in mind that characters like darwin darwin's only way to adapt to hulk was literally being somewhere else but this same guy was able to adapt to freaking hella's death to it. adapting to hella to the point where he just straight up mimicked her power by adapting to her like this. But yet, he could not adapt to World War Hulk's punches. That's a Skyfather tier, guys. And Juggernaut gave World War Hulk a way better fight compared to other heroes. And never got knocked out in the process. Juggernaut's already crazy at full power. But what if I told you there were some occasions where he had some impressive showings when he wasn't necessarily at his normal levels of power, aka weakened? I know you're probably like, what? Let's talk about power fluctuations. I mean, there was this one time where he got his power split in half because when he split his power with Black Tom. I only got one noticeable feat for that. At the time, he threw it all the way into space when he reclaimed his power. There was this time he overrided Sidorak's mental influence. And he got like a drop in power. It states here, now my strength's pretty measurable. I ain't so invulnerable. And don't get me started on Unstoppable. Sure, these fishermen don't pose much of a threat to me now. But if things keep heading where they're heading, who knows? Every day I get weaker and weaker. My name defeats when he was like this, when he overrided his mental control. He has somewhat limits, you know? A lot more limits. You know, I already showed this already, but this is more relevant now. He was during this power decrease state. Well, the reason why he got beat up by Hulk here. It's crazy because Captain Britain's a pretty decent powerhouse. He still was able to take him down even in his weaker state. He's even okay from stomach acid, even when he's not at his full power or getting weaker. Even in this state, he's still able to charge through Cyclops' beams and through Marvel Girl telekinesis. He's still that strong. Cyclops, with these visors on, still should be able to produce mountain-shattering levels of raw power, concussive power. He was even able to heal after being impaled by Rhino. Yeah, even in this one would say weakened state. He's got skill to the point where even when he was blinded, he catches Dazzler by listening really good. You blinded me, smart play, but I could still hear. He's still got some fighting skills more than you think. He fought a being that had the full power of Juggernaut, right? While he didn't have the full power of Juggernaut, thanks to his experience and just fighting skills in general, was able to get the advantage over him. Ain't that crazy? And yet, there was another power fluctuation for Juggernaut where he had briefly joined the Enigma Force, become Captain Universe, Sidorak was angered that he could serve a different entity and cut off much of his power. This is insane because he had a power fluctuation and was still able to fight Hyperion like this. Literally fight King Hyperion in the slugfest. Crazy. Even with the power fluctuation, he was able to take a series of attacks from Iron Man, Luke Cage, even freaking Thor. In this freaking occasion, massively weakened, battle feet, impressive, right? He still has so much durability where King Hyperion hurts his hands. In the raft, aka a super prison made for super powered people, they state that once he gets momentum, he has a link with an extra dimensional entity, feeds him endless kinetic power. Once he begins charging, he's unstoppable. He's strong enough, even while still not at full power, to charge downward through a whole bunch of bedrock. And even while not fully powered, he can use skills to let an enemy get close to him so he can just grab him. Neat trick. There was another power fluctuation when Sidorak realized he was serving the serpent instead of his normal master. Sidorak pretty much basically cut off almost all of his power. And this is during the time where he made X-Men's Colossus into the new Juggernaut. Stuff like this. This weakness didn't stay and it doesn't have that many showings like the other ones, right? You know, the crazy part is I've been talking about him doing this stuff like weakened. But let's get back to him when he's at his normal powers. When it comes to him using momentum or just charging towards something was able to do this just by charging through it. Check this out. His mystical powers won't let him sink. It propels him through water just like other stuff, even though he needs a running start. Yep, even characters like Thunderstrike cannot stop him. Gotta love the Thor tears. Get pushed back. Let's get back to his psionic resistance now. Look, psionic folk try to do him in with psionic blasts. 
But Juggernaut says, nah, I'm good. Even Captain Universe can't probe his mind. Even Professor X full psychic blasts don't affect him. But in his defense, he does have this helmet on. He does actually have a force field. Like it literally was able to resist Marvel Girl's telekinetic abilities. I mean, plenty of fights with Thor. His hammer slowed to a halt because of this force field. He states here, my personal force field is already affecting your dumb mallet. Slowing it down, killing its momentum. Spider-Man's web can't even reach him. Got that right. Now let's talk about regeneration. He's already a Hulk tier, but he has like Wolverine tier regeneration as well, even after being stabbed through the eye. Like think of his outfit like a part of him, like he's kind of like summon it, just kind of conform a new helmet out of some rubble, like literally spare metal. Talk about regeneration and endurance. He was literally able to keep fighting after being reduced to a freaking skeleton. Battle feet, ain't that durable. He just running through the ground. By the way, it doesn't seem he needs to eat, sleep, or breathe. Surviving weeks without sustenance. I don't need food, but by the end, I was hungry enough to eat dirt. Usually being this patient would cause somebody to go insane. He has ridiculous patience. He stated, I once spent years buried underground. I got nothing but patience. I mean, he's so heavy that his feet sink into concrete. <laughs> he could cause tremors just by walking. And by the way, to further prove he's in that tier, I would like to also make something very clear. It is implied that Juggernaut right here is 8th day Juggernaut. The Juggernaut on a totally new level of power. He has more power than usual from Sidorak. If that makes sense, because usually they're on the same level of tier. Context is important, right? Temporary power-ups. Juggernaut has had them, so let's get right into it. Power-ups that he doesn't normally always have. Special occasion type of stuff. You get it? Not his base, guys. Let's talk about the power where he became Kurth, the breaker of freaking stone. He was basically transformed into Kurth, aka one of the worthy, by one of the serpent's enchanted hammers. You know, not many occasions because it's a temporary power-up. But it is kind of cool that he's able to fly. It's cool he's able to possess a man just by touching him. Yeah, buddy. He's got too much power in this state. It's hard to get a measure, though. Is he stronger than his previous self or what? You know what I mean? He's fought like a group of X-Men. So he seems to be pretty still powered up in the powerhouse tiers. It's that tier signing attacks involving mind attack prove ineffective. Mob of X-Men shooting multiple different types of attack. Mercury attempts to incapacitate Juggernaut by filling his lungs. Result ineffective. Aborted when Mercury realized she is being dissolved by Juggernaut's internal antibodies. That's freaking crazy. To incapacitate Juggernaut by igniting blood. Burn you. Result blood ignition a success but worse than ineffective for 15 minutes. Unstoppable Juggernaut is rendered an unstoppable Juggernaut that ignites anything it touches. <laughs> they cannot win to save their life. Tell me why he's so powerful. His hammer is unstoppable like him when he throws it even though it's metal magneto can't seem to stop it can't really affect his armor either it's that tier i understand being sensitive about one's telepathic protection but throwing a hammer at the master magneton is somewhat futile no he had to dodge it like whoa the hammer it's unstoppable too yeah captain universe is one of those powers no matter what tier you are it instantly makes you like a at least a thor tier already so yeah of course juggernaut has become captain universe before in his career He's got the power of an enigma force he got weird abilities that are different than before like being Able to trap Spider-Man like a little bubble. You know, Captain Universe powers, right? <laughs> Juggernaut, with this level of power, he was able to repair damage to tectonic plates, what would have caused a catastrophic earthquake. Reach down with the unit power, fill the fractures in the plate. Juggernaut had to go to work to fix stuff with this. Let me show you just from this panel to panel of him, you know, helping the world. Doing Captain Universe type stuff, just repairing it. All this godlike power. It's kind of flattering to see. But the Enigma Force is no longer needed here. You know what I mean? Well done, Juggernaut. Now, when it comes to other temporary power-ups, this one can say this shouldn't even technically be a temporary power because it's just him being amplified by Sidorak a lot more than before. His name, like they call this Tryon Juggernaut. He's got massive more size and everything. With just raw punches, he's evidently able to punch through the fabric of space and time. Like, what is the limitation of him in his Tryon state? I mean, he was able to resist the pull of a giant extra-dimensional creature. You know, and his dry yeah, he just looks like powered up here. You know what I mean? Yeah, ginormous. Yikes! He was able to absorb Wolverine. Yikes! Just consecutively destroying dimensional walls, as you can see here. Juggernaut kind of has a new set of abilities nowadays. Kind of similar, but just a tad bit different based on where he gets his power from. But let me get on that in a second. But how strong is Juggernaut like just normally in the past, majority of his career, no amplifications? He's definitely in that Hulk tier, Thor tier, Hercules tier, immeasurable strength tier, meaning that he should be able to lift over sextillions of tons. Let me say that again. Juggernaut should be able to lift over sextillions of tons being able to lift multiple earth-sized structures that's just a mega low ball saying sex sextillions he more than likely can lift more than that yes that means juggernaut can lift way more than 500 tons yeah the class systems yeah that 100 ton limit 500 ton limit stuff is is nothing realistically he can lift like billions of times more than this easily right sounds crazy i sounds like i'm talking japanese he can lift 
the earth if he felt like it. Juggernaut's already proved that he can match characters like Thor, and look how consistently Thor is a match for characters like Hulk. Not to mention that Juggernaut's knocked out characters like Hulk in raw strength. On top of this, Juggernaut should be able to lift sextillions of tons easily because of the fact that Thor can lift sextillions of tons, and he can match characters like Thor in strength. Like, it literally only makes sense because Thor can lift planet-sized snakes, which is over hundreds of tons, which is over 500 tons, which is over a thousand tons. Just like us in real life, most people can punch harder than what they can lift. Juggernaut more than likely can do this as well. How hard can he hit though? Or kick or punch? How hard can he do it? And don't forget that Juggernaut is extremely cocky and says he has enough power to kill Sidorak himself. <laughs> Take this the way you wish. By the way, I showed this earlier and this is where Sidorak was weakened as well, which is why he was able to do this. He got help to use his own power against him thanks to a mystical arcane. You know, what I'm saying is stated here, here arcane lightning rod, because at first he was getting the business. Not to mention that Juggernaut has taken attacks like literally like like, didn't even flinch from attacks from characters like Rogue, who is Miss Marvel tier. That's important because characters like Miss Marvel can blast away stars with their raw power just in general. I'm not exaggerating. This same Miss Marvel, aka Carol Danvers, can blast away stars. And Juggernaut just ate an attack from Rogue like it was nothing. He should be or higher of characters like this. It was literally stated that Captain Marvel has enough blast power to melt a hole in a star. These are the type of beings that Juggernaut has to contend against. Which is why Juggernaut should be in that black hole level or Hulk tier because, let's face it, he's physically strong strong in characters like Carol. Consistently portrayed, right? He's that strong up there with Hulk and Thor and them, you know? Now, when it comes to recent Juggernaut stuff, Juggernaut actually lost the Gem of Sidorak along with his powers. Kane ended up binding to the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. The difference is he lost the Gem of Sidorak, but then he ended up being binded with the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. Yeah, there's a difference. They sound very similar, though. They're kind of in the same neighborhood. Get the idea? He's still implied to still be in those Hulk-ish tiers, but he just has a different power source in this particular occasion fighting the Hulk himself yet again. Slugfest style, just like the old days, but it does seem like the Hulk has an advantage in these immortal Hulk days. If anything, the Hulk is like is one of his best power levels, while Juggernaut doesn't seem to be at his better power levels from back in the day. I'm not talking about any amps either. He doesn't seem to be as big either. You know what I'm saying? They even go as far as saying, holy crap, he's so much stronger than you. Yeah, no kidding. Need a minute. They kind of had to resort to activating a gamma siphon, the gamma radiation being sucked out of him. They stay here. So if you're watching at home, yeah, we're sort of cheating. Yeah, so they kind of cheated a little bit to fight the whole. Don't lie. Juggernaut looks tight with this outfit on. Don't freaking lie. Just epic design, you know. And yes, he can dial up armor from another dimension. Anybody that are lore heads that like this, other people serve Sidorak. Juggernaut that served him the longest was depowered. He walks through the doors and says, what makes you special? I have served Sidorak longer than anyone ever has. You, you are the Juggernaut. No, but I will be again as soon as I have that. More lore for you states, for decades I have scourged, bartered, begged, and stolen artifacts that could draw forth the crimson bands of Sidorak. I discovered the means to maintain their cohesion in our dimension. I did this so Sidorak would deem me worthy as his host on Earth. No one will stop me from having that power. Flash forward in the comic, you know, fighting, you know, charges through, still does the little standard stuff. Two guys ended up fighting over the bands because Juggernaut wants to be powered up again. Got them wrapped up around them. Now that's how he got all powered up back then. And that's when it goes forward to time and now. This shows what happened months ago. The reason why he's powered by something new and kind of different. I brought this up a little earlier, but this can be a little bit confusing, right? So he, he's powered by the crimson bands of Sidorak, right? On the earthly plane. It's that tier. Chips and dust are all that's left of the gem of Sidorak, but they're still Still contain power he's talking about how he missed them too and they even go does my avatar on earth return to me our link has been weakened kane marco but our bond remains forged in blood and pain actually confronting sidorak he pretty much lets them know where they are on terms of serving and stuff like that he stayed trying to tell juggernaut what to do he says no what do you mean no he states i'm not your avatar anymore i'm not linked to you now the harness is made from bands of sidorak that exist in the earthly plane your ability to access the gym is gone you're cut off from any links to human host to earth. So he's found a way to cut off Sidorak from a link to the gym so he can't just like rip away your power whenever he feels like it. Hey, Juggernaut, I'm, I'm not, I don't want you to be strong. Let me just take away your power. He can't do that no more, evidently. He says, then why are you talking to me here? I'm not. I'm on earth. Coming in terms that I'm finally free. So he's like basically free from Sidorak, 
but still getting the benefits of being like a full power juggernaut. This is like relatively new. I can't wait to see what the future holds when it comes to this though. He states, I'm done serving madmen and gods. Every choice from now on for good or bad is going to be mine. To really understand how current Juggernaut is, let's go back in time and see how they explain it further. Remember the gem, the source of your transformation, my doing? Whosoever touches this gem shall possess the power of the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. It's like he found a bootleg version in the current comments to where he could get the power of the Bands of Sidorak just straight up from Sidorak without using the actual gem. Yeah, it's kind of confusing like that so it's like that's why he should be similar to the same powers or maybe his power will increase over time the reason why he got like overpowered by immortal hulk in that situation that's the only thing that makes sense to me right well hopefully the more stuff comes out for this new juggernaut that's free from cigarette we get to see more feats from him like this he should have more consistent showing since he's not going to have as many power fluctuates Sidorak doesn't just have ultimate control over him where, oh yeah, I'm going to take away most of your power. He can't just do that now. That's the good thing about it now. But what do you think the future holds for Juggernaut? If there was something that was as dense as a black hole, I do believe Juggernaut is in those Superman tiers. And he should be able to strike with such force if he wants to. I mean, that wouldn't make sense because he's always fighting these characters pretty consistently. And now that he's free from Sidorak, it should even be worse. Just for the fact that planet busting is nothing in Marvel, he should be able to punch with the force of over millions of times earth shattering force over. Like that should just be light work at this point. But what do you guys think? Post your comments down below. Let me know what y'all think. Did you guys know Juggernaut was this strong? Do you like that I made another video about Juggernaut? I know some of y'all probably was hungry for it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to keep the content coming though. Post some comments down below. And check out those playlists. Trust me, you might like what's else on the channel. I'll see you guys later, though. Respect, Juggernaut.